Hello, my name is Jeffrey. Some might know me for my channel Recollect. I'm here today on my second channel, Recollection, to do a little special ranking video for a years long challenge I've been working on. Uh, some might be familiar with it if you clicked on this, some might not be, but I've been, ever since 2021 I believe, been on this challenge to be every Rockstar game that isn't a GTA game beating its main story. I've been doing a video series about this for a long time. It's culminated to like a six hour total video. Anyway, the gist of it is I play each game's story and then I talk about it, what I like, what I don't like, and then I rate its difficulty and then rate how fun I think it is. So we finally gotten to the point where I've beaten all 30 games. It took me almost like three years to do it. So now we've gone from Monster Truck Madness 64 all the way to Red Dead Redemption 2. 1999 I think to 2018 and the whole challenge took around 482 hours to beat so pretty crazy and the beginning of the series I said I'm going to pick my top 10 favorite games well we're going to do that and more today I want to rank all 30 games difficulty wise we're not going to do like tiers or anything like that instead we're going to go chronologically and then put them in order of like this one's harder than this this one's easier than that till we get to a point where all 30 are in easiest to hardest range. I think it could be interesting because I have truly beaten every single game, played every mission, except some bonus missions here and there, but yeah, I think that should be cool. Um, just as a little uh, tidbit with that, I'm not going to be perfectly going off of all those difficulty ratings I said for each game over the past videos and years because I've kind of changed some of my opinions on what I've said and I actually watched back some of the older videos to get a fresher memory of those first like 20 games. Yeah, I definitely had some opinions change. I'm going to be going off of memory today. I'm not going to be really going off of those difficulty ratings, going off of what I really think was hard, what I think really made it a sweaty experience. And then after that, I'm going to pick a top 10 favorite. 1 through 10, we're going to go reverse order of which is my favorite non-GTA Rockstar game and why. Again, off of memory. Not going to be going off the fun factor ratings or anything like that. Just uh, off of how much I like them and how much I remember them. So anyway, we're going to get started. We got 30 games to get through, so I can't spend too much crazy time on each. I'm not going to be including Undead Nightmare as a separate game. I'm just going to loop that in with Red Dead Redemption. So anyway, that's what we're doing. Let's get going with the difficulty ratings. Monster Truck Madness 64 to Red Dead 2. Let's go. Starting off with Monster Truck Madness 64, I already know this is going to rank really high because I have some dreadful memories with the game. Now I look back at it and I kind of like am fond of it because it's those N64 clunky games. There's something about them I just really like and I look back fondly on. Anyway, with Monster Truck Madness, I can really remember those pitch black races. There was about two races or two maps near the end that I had to beat and they required you to play on this game mode that was like pitch black and you couldn't see where you're going, you had to memorize the maps. That was really brutal, and combined with just extreme clunk, extreme jankiness with the controls, that's gonna be a, a high ranker. So we'll just put it in the middle right now and uh, keep placing around it. Next up with Earthworm Jim 3D. In the video, I believe I said this one was harder than Monster Truck Madness. I remember it definitely took longer hours wise. Again, very clunky game. The controls were so brutal. There were some missions where I just remember I was borderline tears. There's a sewer level specifically that was just, oh my God, it was just had me rip my hair out. Yeah, a lot of notably hard missions, notably bad controls, a lot of weird uh, requirements too. Like you had to have certain marble equipment requirements certain golden utter requirements and that was a huge pain and some tricky boss battles with like some unique gimmicks that really took a lot of time to get used to so pure frustration level i remember being slightly higher than monster truck madness but again i kind of look back on it fondly i kind of like earthworm gen 3d i do remember at the time very frustrating uh borderline tears so i think i gotta put that a little higher than monster truck madness 64. Next with Thrasher, Skate, Destroy. In terms of difficulty, I do remember being very hard. I remember the mo the hardest part about it is it's a skating game that you have to memorize a bunch of combos. I did end up learning a ton of them. I, like I said in the video, I like got this muscle memory thing where I could just like rapid fire do a bunch of combos. And then the game got easier once I did that. But there's really a uh, lack of a holding hand in that game. It's just, here's the map, here's the combos you gotta learn, here's the score limit you gotta reach. and 
I like that simplicity. Like I said, that's like one of the game's strongest elements is it's just a sandbox skating game, but it was extremely hard. I just remember those first couple hours just like not understanding the combos, but it is a, you got to learn it, you know, you'll eventually get used to it and get those combos down, get the points going, get those streaks going. And yeah, the game got easier after that but it definitely was hard. It was definitely on the harder end. So I'm going to put that behind Monster Truck Madness 64, but it's still probably gonna rank decently high. Next with Evil Knievel on the Game Boy Color. I definitely remember this being tricky. Not too bad. Uh, it's another one of those where once you get it down, it kind of goes by semi-fast. But yeah, that was a tricky one because of weird elements about it. Like you can't really tap your head that much or that's going to be an instant death or just really tight courses or out of control spinning or kind of a glitchy nature and and I do remember a lot of the annoying elements like not being able to tell what's background and what's foreground and a lot of momentum stopping obstacles that were annoying anyway I definitely think it's quite difficult very janky very old but again uh kind of like it I'm kind of like there's some of these games I have bad memories about and I just don't ever want to play them again and then there's other ones where I'm like nah I'd probably play that again and I think Evil Knievel is one of those so I think I'm gonna put Evil Knievel behind Thrasher but it's in that same level of very hard but not like extremely difficult Next, we have Wild Metal, uh, a game I really like. I really think it's an old gem. Uh, super not talked about uh, in terms of Rockstar games. Difficulty-wise, I remember the lack of explanation being very t hard. The queasy camera, that really stands out to me. And some, at times, annoying enemies, but I really only remember the positives about it. Nothing crazy hard. So I would definitely put that behind Evil Knievel. Now we have the two Austin Powers games. First with Obehave. Now Obehave, I can pretty safely say, might be the easiest game on this whole ranking. It had a couple mini games within, a couple different modes, and I just don't remember any of them being that hard at all. They were kind of board game-esque, a little platformer in there. Not that difficult, so that's easily gonna go behind Wild Metal. Then, of course, we have Austin Powers, Welcome to My Underground Lair. That one was not as easy as Obehave. I remember it actually being very difficult. I rating it quite high in the difficulty. Main reason being it had the same mini games as Obehave, but it had the additional copycat Evil Knievel motocross races at the end that were so hard. I ended up, you know, cheating using save states, which I say in the video, and then I felt so guilty about it that I ended up having to, like, get the physical version and play it on my Game Boy and actually beat it because I just it didn't sit right with me but I remember so frustrating so hard so janky some of the trickiest courses I think that's gonna rank below monster truck madness and above thrasher for sure that was a hard one next uh, midnight club street racing the first midnight club game I do remember being hard but not crazy. Uh, it was the first in the series. It was one of the earliest PS2 games. So, you know, decent level of jank to it. I do remember just some of the, uh, some of the unfairness, like uh, the Nitrous was a huge pain in that game. Very stingy with it. The AI bots were very tough, very, uh, they say they're not rubber bandy, but I beg the differ. I definitely, the hardest part for sure I remember is having to chase down the champs for the cities. You'd have to get behind them and ride behind them for a certain amount of time. And then in order to trigger those final boss races and that was so hard definitely trickier game i would have to put it i don't know i say below thrasher below thrasher above evil knievel next we have smugglers run one uh, just a classic rockstar game i love this game it's so simple so fun i just love a simple objective game that you can just turn your brain off and it's just pure fun and that's what smugglers run is difficulty wise i remember listing off several of the missions that were hard but definitely nothing crazy like that kept me up at night or had me crazy sweating i would definitely say the fun outweighed any difficult time i had with it so i'm going to put it above wild metal and below evil knievel Next, we have Surfing H3O, a game I probably have said in multiple different videos was probably the hardest, or I gave it a 10 out of 10, and oh yeah, it was extremely hard. Even though it didn't take me that long to beat, I just remember being incredibly frustrated by it because of its super clunky controls. The really cool surfboard control method was unique and commendable, but man, the lack of 
true explanation of how you were supposed to ride those waves and land tricks and progress through the game and how many stages there were blah 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 i just remember being extremely frustrating it was like a real low point it was constantly like when's this game gonna end when are the credits gonna roll it's super hard extremely hard i'd probably say i'd say probably in between i put it in between earthworm gym and monster truck madness it's up there i mean it's a hard game next we have oni I'm probably going to say right away, this is probably going to be number one hardest. Technically, Midnight Club 2 took me more time to beat, but Oni has just got this special level of difficulty. Extremely hard controls. The combat was very cool, very different, but I just remember very much struggling with it. Checkpoint saving when you have low health, really spread out checkpoints, super hard enemies, super hard weapons, some of the trickiest boss battles ever pure skill needed to get good at the game i'm not even gonna say it's all skill based i'm gonna say it's i just don't think it's that that you know well made honestly i know it's got a huge fan base and people love oni and i do like the game it's weird it's cool it's different but man was it hard i definitely am putting that at the number one spot currently above earthworm gym next we have smuggles run 2 I remember being harder than one, but again, not crazy because it's a Smuggler's Run game. Uh, it had that thing in the game where you had to outrun people at the end of um, your objective. You, you'd get to the end of the mission and be like, oh, lose the cops or whatever. And that was just really hard, I remember. But I ended up figuring out how to get past that and, you know, the um, countermeasures. That made the game a lot easier, but it was definitely harder. So I would put it probably above midnight club street racing but below thrasher okay we're gonna keep these moving a little quicker because we got a lot of games to get through max pain one uh, a lot of fond memories i like the game a lot i remember being quite hard um the painkiller stinginess was tricky and uh just the tricky enemies but nothing crazy i don't remember so i'm probably put max pain above midnight club but below smuggler's run Next, State of Emergency. Holy crap, this game was really, really something. It was incredibly long. That's what I remember about it. 175 missions. I still remember that number. It was just the most grindy, tedious game ever of doing the same thing over and over, over and over again. Like, what game do you know has 175 required missions? Like, that's insane. Plus, some of them are so hard. A lot of it had to deal with, uh, you know, relying on AI and protecting NPCs, and that was a nightmare, and holy crap, I just remember so much frustration. Long time to beat the game, and yeah, very, very frustrating game. So, State of Emergency, I'm going to put it behind my underground lair and above Thrasher. I think that's an accurate spot. Next, the Italian job. This was not a very hard game. I remember there being two specifically hard missions, like two of the last ones because they're longer and had unique objectives, but it really was not a hard game. Mostly pretty quick. I think I beat it in five hours, so this is going to go low. I'd say, um, honestly, behind Wild Metal and O Behave. Next, Midnight Club 2. The game that took the longest in the whole challenge took me 48 hours. One race in the game literally took me seven hours. And one of the, the, the Savo races, he's like the world champ. Man, that was absolutely brutal. So difficult. But I look back really fondly on the game. I like a lot of what Midnight Club, Midnight Club 2 did compared to 3 and LA. Because they just had a lot of goofiness with the characters. Ton of huge jumps. My favorite maps. And really good... Uh, race layouts really unique a lot of unique objectives going underground going in the air like i said man undeniably extremely hard but very intentionally hard that's the thing is it a lot of these older games difficulty comes from uh you know jankiness of old games this is just just a well-crafted hard game but midnight club 2 is undoubtedly hard so it is going to go below oni but above earthworm gym max pain 2 the fall of max pain I own it on PS2, but I played it on PC, which definitely probably made it easier, but it's well known that it's easier than the first game. Probably one of the easier in the whole challenge. But yeah, Max Payne 2, I beat it very quickly. I don't remember any hard parts at all. I remember being very smooth PC port, and um, yeah, it was very fun. I liked it a lot, but no, not very hard at all. So I would put it, honestly, behind Wild Metal in the Italian job. Next, we have the first Manhunt game. There, I remember being hard, not crazy. Um, I do like Manhunt 1 a lot. I think it's got so many iconic scenes and so many iconic characters and unique objectives and people love that game. I really love Manhunt 1. I think it's fantastic. The atmosphere is great. Difficulty wise, 
there were a lot of notably hard parts. Just, I remember they purposely want you to play stealthy, so they made the combat very difficult and they didn't give you many guns. And that's what really made the game so hard is you couldn't kind of cheese it. You had to play how they wanted you to play. Plus I had some hard boss battles that I remember. So I definitely put on the harder end. Um, it had that PS2 jank as well. So I'm gonna put M Manhunt I'm going to put it between Thrasher and Smuggler's Run 2. I feel like I have Thrasher kind of high, but I mean, that game was uniquely hard. Red Dead Revolver is the next game to rank, and uh, I don't remember it being that hard. I like it a lot. I remember a lot of the characters, the story. It's so different from the other Redemption games, but I like it quite a bit still. I just don't remember it being that hard. A lot of annoying boss battles. Um, I like the fact that boss battles were there, but I remember them being very hard. And yeah, just kind of a mediocre difficulty game. It wasn't that hard and wasn't super easy. So I probably put it behind Midnight Club Street Racing and above Evil Knievel. Next, Midnight Club 3. I remember ranking this very low difficulty wise because the motorcycles in the game are so good. Uh, you can shift your weight around and just fly through the missions. I like Midnight Club 3. I think it's by far the least notable game only because I like I played the PS2 version and it just looks so dark and bland and samey and it doesn't help that I use the same vehicle for almost all the races so I, it just has kind of a non-memory in my head but I just remember it being not hard at all. Ton of races but you flew through them quick. I really don't remember one race that I was on for more than an hour and that's nothing compared to um, Midnight Club 2 so Midnight Club 3 is gonna rank low. I'm gonna put it I'm gonna put it above Smuggler's Run and behind uh, Evil Knievel. Next we have Warriors, which um, love the game. It's one of the most unique of these 30. I love the way they, you know, based it off the movie with how loyal it is and the characters. It's so good. The atmosphere is so good. Difficulty wise, man, I don't remember being that hard at all. Couple hard objectives here and there that can stand out in my head. You know, a couple scenes that was definitely a little tricky, but really not that bad. I'd say um, Warriors is probably on the lower end, probably behind Smuggler's Run 1 and above Wild Metal. I just don't remember being that hard. Whew. Next up is a doozy, uh, Table Tennis. Very fond of this game. I love how weird it is. I love how no one ever really talks about it. But man, uh, Table Tennis is such a weird, unique game, but it is so hard. If you remember, you have to get their like tournaments and there's several layers of difficulty. I didn't do the, the final one, which is pro, but man, the one before that I did beat in order to trigger the credits. And that was just insanely difficult, like easily one of the hardest games. I literally think I spent around like between six and eight hours on one dude near the end. Like it took a whole day of gameplay to just crank through one guy. And uh, yeah, extremely fond memories of the game, but extremely stressful and angry and screaming and rage quitting. Table tennis is going to rank very high. I'm going to put it behind Midnight Club 2, but above Earthworm Jim. Next, we have Bully. Bully was not a hard game at all. I love the game to death. It has so much unique objectives and variety of gameplay and memorable scenes and just a great city. I love the atmosphere and the setting of Bully. It's so good. But difficulty wise, it is not a hard game. What was hard about it was the classroom sections that like required you to do math and geography and um, spelling. Those were like, of course you can do it. It's a kid's game at the end of the day, but it just required you to tap into something that you don't normally have to tap into for video games those were tricky but a fun tricky so uh, that would put it honestly above warriors but behind smugglers run one only a couple left we're gonna crank through these pretty quick we got manhunt 2 another game that's just fantastic but notably very easy i don't remember very hard parts at all again i played it on pc so it just wasn't that bad the required stealth and the the clunky combat and some hard enemy types and some tricky missions yeah but I just really don't remember it being that hard at all. And I think I even put the difficulty as pretty low. So we're going to we're going to put it pretty low. So I'm going to yeah, I got the perfect spot. Below Wild Metal and above Max Payne 2. Next we have Midnight Club LA, which was a very long game. I do like it. Uh, like I said, Midnight Club 2 is my favorite in the series, but LA was good. I don't remember it being very hard, but hard in the sense that an endurance test to get through, it was just so hard to know what to, which races you had to participate in and oh, the pink slip races. Those were, oh man, those were super brutal. Those were races where like if you lost, you lost your car and I kept losing cars till I was on my last one. That was brutal. 
but besides that honestly wasn't that bad a lot of the races were quite easy and you flew through a ton of them pretty quickly so again the bikes were so good so you know anyway i put midnight club i put, I put it above red dead revolver and behind street racing Next up, we have Beaterator, which um, there's no objective to beat. Uh, if you watch that part of the video, it's just a beat making software. Um, a cool one at that and a pretty in-depth one, but um, it definitely takes skill to get good at. It's definitely difficult, but I didn't even give it a difficulty rating because there's nothing to beat. So I'm just going to automatically put that at the lowest spot, even though on a skill technical level, it's probably pretty high. Next, we have Red Dead Redemption, which I'm also just going to lump in with uh, Undead Nightmare. The base game, I remember being very not hard at all. Very few parts that really required that much sweat. Pretty straightforward objectives, not that janky. Great game. I mean, I, there's so much I love about it. The characters, the setting, um, the story was all great, but not that hard. Undead Nightmare, though, I remember being very difficult. Like I said in the video, extremely glitchy. And I don't like to say, you know, this game's super glitchy, it's super bad, you know, it's got so many glitches, it's unplayable. It's not unplayable, it's just the glitches made for a game-breaking experience. I had to restart the game like eight times probably, and had to redo saves and stuff. It was a nightmare with all the headless glitch, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to rant about it again. I'm just saying very glitchy and hard. And, um, but the base game, not that bad. So it's kind of medium, middle of the road. I put it above Bully, but below Smuggler's Run 1. Next, we have LA Noir, another fantastic game, one of my favorites. Difficulty wise, a lot of it was easy, I remember, because the gunfights, the racing, that was very simple and easy. But the unique gameplay element of having to interview people and read emotions and, you know, weave together narratives, that was hard and very unique for a game and something you don't ever really see in other games so that really cranked it up i kind of sucked at la noir i would always shank questions like i said in the video i only probably got about 50 percent right most of the time sometimes i'd get all sometimes i get none so of the questions correct it's one of those situations where i look back on it so fondly that i'm not really like thinking about how hard it was i'm just thinking about how much i like it but it was undoubtedly difficult so we're going to put it we're gonna put it between max pain one and street racing okay max pain three this one's pretty fresh because I played it not too long ago. Pretty simple game for the most part, except those last couple missions. Definitely hard. Not in the sense that it's like bad mission design or janking controls, just like a well-crafted challenge that was hard. A lot of bullcrap or like the final enemy would kill me and stuff like that. Not notably difficult, not notably hard. It was only 14 missions long. It didn't take that long to get through. It's probably on the lower end. So I would probably put it, I'd put it behind straight racing, but above LA. And lastly, we're on the final game, finally, for the difficulty ranking Red Dead Redemption 2. Not a hard game. A great game. A game I love. Hard in the sense that it is so long and you really have to schedule out when you're going to play this game because it is incredibly long mission-wise, but um, not hard. I really, like I said in the video, the survival tedium kind of makes it hard in, in a very annoying way where like your health would always run out at the wrong times or your horse's stamina would be low at the wrong times or you'd be way across the map and have to do 20 minute horse rides. That sucked. That really kind of brought the game down and made it harder. It, like I said, holds your hand a lot and uh, the objectives are very clear. The game is extremely polished and well made, so it was not hard. It's going to be on the lower end. I'd honestly put it below Warriors and above Wild Metal. It's seriously not bad. So that's all 30 games ranked. Let me look through real quick and see if there's anything I'd change. I think Wild Metal needs to go above Red Dead 2. That's a change that needs made because Wild Metal was a little tricky. Yeah, I feel like Smuggler's Run 1's a little low. I think Smuggler's Run 1 needs to go above Midnight Club 3. It was a little harder. Evil Knievel definitely needs to go higher. That needs to go skip it way ahead to in front of Street Racing. Even in front of L.A. Noir. I think it should go L.A. Noir, Evil Knievel, and Max Payne because yeah, it's, it was hard. I really had to move that one up. I think I was off with that. I remember it being very hard, but yeah, this, this seems pretty accurate. Max Payne one was hard. Smuggles run two was pretty hard. Manhunt was tricky. The first one thrasher hard. Yeah, that looks about right. I mean, those were probably the hardest games. So the top 10 being Manhunt, Thrasher, State of Emergency, My Underground Lair, Monster Truck Madness 64, Surfing H3O, Earthworm Gym, Table Tennis, Midnight Club 2, and Oni. I think that's pretty solid. 
And Beta Raider is just kind of tossed in at the end. I don't really count it. I think um, some of those might be surprising. A lot of the newer games are just going to be on the bottom end because they're way polished and way easier. And a lot of the older clunkier games, as you see, are up at the top. And then there's Table Tennis. That was just a very hard game. I think that's solid for the difficulty. Now it's time to reveal my top 10 favorite games, not in terms of how fun I thought they were or difficulty being that much of a factor, just which ones do I love the most? I love ranking. So we're gonna go from 10 to one, let's go. So for my favorite top 10 non-GTA Rockstar games, starting with number 10, we have Thrasher, Skate, and Destroy. Uh, what makes the game so great is it's so simple. It's just a skate park, tricks, and combos, and the physics were cool, and the music was fantastic. The real skate brands being tossed in was cool. The cop chasing was interesting. And the fact that you felt like you learned a skill, a unique combo-based kind of gaming skill, was just very memorable. I just, there's so much done right and the uh the look of the skate parks too i just loved great memories with thrasher love the game number nine spot i have midnight club 2 which might be kind of surprising given how long it took to beat and uh some of those races that just took hours and hours but i just have a lot of fond memories with it it just really captures that arcade racer feel with just some great maps that are very different feeling um the race layouts were very unique and different compared to a lot of the other midnight club games i just kept going back to like mc2 did it better mc2 did it better and i think the best part about it was the dynamic race design like so many crazy jumps crazy obstacles the random occurrences were kind of annoying like a semi getting in your way but i just have a lot of fond memories about it and when you have something that hard and you overcome it you kind of look back on it fondly so for the number eight spot i have max pain one it's definitely my favorite of the Max Payne trilogy. The what really has going for it is the unique feel of the gameplay with the slow-mo and the shoot dodging and combined with a fantastic story with those great, you know, comic book style cutscenes. I love those. That's so different and unique. Plus those psychedelic portions, which really shook up the gameplay and provided a unique challenge like that blood puzzle walk. That was so hard, but very different and weird. And I like that. And yeah, just great game. Fond memories, cool characters, great atmosphere atmosphere very fun it was just like i just remember forgetting about the chore like feeling some of the games have and just having fun number seven we have warriors incredibly unique rockstar game the objectives are very varied and weird and do a great job at capturing the movie which i also love all the graffiti and the turf wars and all the different groups and their different costumes and just the great way that it follows the movie and all the prequel stuff in it too like most of the game happens before the movie and it's very seamless and enjoyable it felt like a playable movie but also just a lot of fun elements a lot of fun different parts of the story that um i look fondly back on i i love the game i think it is easily one of their best hidden gems number six we have manhunt one yeah i thought i might put manhunt two higher but manhunt one there's just something about it it achieves this creepy atmosphere and eeriness that other games wish they could do a lot of games try for the cheap jump scares and stuff and this is just all about you know ambiance and add to that some iconic characters a memorable story i like the premise of the story the mission variety was really good all the different settings yeah it was very hard and annoying but it's just very unique and i look back on it very fondly Number five, Smuggler's Run 1. I love Smuggler's Run, I love both games. The simple idea of just going from point A to B with whatever objective, whether it's destroy a vehicle, capture you know a couple packages, deliver packages, turf wars, you're, you're with a group of people doing some sort of objective, just avoiding the cops or just a speed thing. It was just so much fun and so simple and lighthearted and I can turn my brain off and just accomplish this simple objective. 30 something missions long, not too hard to the point where I was annoyed. Love the map layouts, they're huge. Big jumps, floppy physics, just a lot of great stuff. I just love this Monkey's Run games. Number four spot, I have Red Dead Redemption, the first game. I love the game. I think it does a ton right. The open world feel is really fantastic. It's empty, but also feels right with the desert setting and the Western feel. The characters are really the highlight of the game, like I said in the video. Um, I can name them all off. I remember them. They're all very funny or, you know, they got some sad backstory or I just, I love all the different, the variety of them and just very memorable. A lot of 
the physics really made that game extremely fun and weird hog tying people and you know your horses flopping around in the ways your enemies would just you know flop all over the place depending on where you shot them uh, just a great game i just uh love the story was not hard at all made for a uh, fun experience and undead nightmare i mean what a dlc how unique what a cool concept extremely different and fun in a different sort of way i mean i like that a lot too so yeah number three we have la noir I was tempted to put this at number one. I think the game is just so unique. There's no game like this. Um, no game really sense. That idea of face motion capture software allowing you to read the emotion of an NPC character is just so like revolutionary and well executed. I don't agree with all the decisions they made with, you know, is that person lying or not? But, you know, who cares about that? It did get a little repetitive, you know, with that idea of investigating, finding clues, interviewing, pressing charges, blah, blah, blah. But, I mean, come on. Finding that evidence and rotating it and finding all the different clues and all the unique characters and the very engaging story, which is very long, but uh, has a lot of twists and turns in it and all the great partners you work alongside. And man, what a great looking world, like that old LA combined with all the different stuff you do, like the driving, the fighting, the investigating. And it's just so commendable for the fact you have to tap into this different part of your brain to play the game. It's not like a run and gun, not like turn your brain off. You really have to lock in. That's why I have it so high, it's number three. Number two, we have Red Dead Redemption 2. This one's pretty fresh in my head. I played it not too long ago. It's extremely long, but it's extremely great. By far the best part of the game is the story. Watching Arthur go from, you know, this ragtag gunslinger to this like emotional dude that's trying to take care of people in his slow decline is just so moving, so sad, but also it's just great and very satisfying and entertaining. And the whole last part of the game where he plays John and it cleanly transitions to Red Dead 1, like, oh man, it's so good. Plus the game is incredibly detailed to like the most utmost degree. Again, the survival tedium kind of knocks the game down because there's so many things you need to keep track of and so many different items to buy and customize. You know, I don't love that much options, but they do so much good compared to the little that it does bad. The game looks so good. There's so much content. There's so many side characters and various side activities to do. I didn't even close to, you know, scratch the surface of all there is to do or talk about in the game. But man, Red Dead 2, love the game. Ranks very high. So that leaves the number one spot, which you might have guessed, but it's going to be Bully Scholarship Edition, just to be clear. Bully is just, it's one of my new favorite games. It's so unique. It's so different from not only all these other games, but all other games I've played before. What I think the game's strongest element is the timing and the schedule and the different brain mode required, where you have to maintain a class schedule where you have to be there at certain times. You have to sleep at certain times or you'll pass out. You have to get good grades in different classes by utilizing different skills, spelling, geography, math, chemistry, biology. And each one of those is a different fun mini game. And plus the characters are so good. They're so rock star. The way the game progresses is very smooth and not, you know, slog at all. It's not that hard. And probably my favorite part of the game is like, it's an open world, but it's not an overwhelming, intimidating open world. It's a couple like four or five sections of the map. You can easily get around it each. It's just very, a very clever game. There's so much clever about it. The characters, the world, the objectives, the different variety of gameplay. I just love Bully. I just think it's great. I think it's my number one favorite game I've played in the 30 game challenge. Up there for maybe one of my favorite Rockstar games. I don't know which GTAs I would put higher than all these games I ranked, but uh, that top five there, those are going to be hard to beat. That's it for this ranking video. I know it was very rambly. It was unscripted. Just going off of old memories of playing these games. Hopefully you got some enjoyment out of it. That's it uh, with Rockstar this whole challenge. It's done. It's over with. I beat all 30 games. This ranking is complete and we're moving on to bigger and better things. Thanks if you watched all the Rockstar videos. Thanks if you sat through this whole video. Uh, stay tuned to this channel for different weird side projects, but you know, mostly staying tuned to the main channel because that's where all the big juicy uploads are going to be. If you want an extended discussion talking about the Rockstar series, that's going to be on Patreon soon. My channel is mainly crowdfunded through Patreon, so it really helps if you could go over there and potentially support the channel if you've watched for a couple years or have enjoyed videos. And also there's a lot of behind the scenes stuff on there. I've posted several videos, pictures, ton of text updates, you know, always telling people what I'm working on and you get your name featured in the main channel uploads. So it's all good stuff. So anyway, that was it for this ranking video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. There's the 30 ranking difficulty wise and then the top 10 favorites. So there you go. 
See ya.